Stefano. Hey. What are you doing here, man? I'm just here to have a pint. Oh, wow. A true pint. Let me get you a pint. Let's sit down and have a chat. Yeah, let's do it. Cool, man. Hi there, guys. So, welcome to another episode of The Uncast Show. I happened to bump into Stefano in the pub, so I thought, let's have a chat. Yeah. So, what are you doing here in the UK, man? Uh, mainly here to drink beer. And Sounds good. And to know the locals. And, I guess, talk about Unraid. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, what are you drinking there, Stefano? Uh, <laughs> I already forgot the name of it, but it is a cider. Yeah, a British cider from Somerset. Thatcher's Gold. Thatcher's Gold. That's awesome. the one. Well, I'm drinking a lager. So, how long have you been over here in the UK? Three days now. Yeah? First time? Yep, first time. Awesome. First time for everything. First pub, first time in the UK, all awesome. sorts of firsts. And how are you enjoying it? All right, so far so good. The weather's been absolutely lovely. Uh, it was a little hot on the first day here, mm-hmm. but um, it was mostly just an adjustment phase that we had to go through because in the United States, we're so used to AC everywhere and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, we got there though. I saw when you posted on Twitter that you had a fan in your hotel room, so <laughs> yeah. I was thinking to myself, oh no, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's going to kill him with no AC. But... The, the fan laid in bed with us while we, <laughs> while we slept, so. Great, so I was going to ask you something, as you're the man who probably know. Red Hat has recently changed its licensing, I believe. That's correct. And I wondered, how is that going to affect the clones such as Rocky and other, other clones? Well, like Aqua Linux, right. So we're not entirely sure how that will affect them in the long term because the licensing just changed. So now, for those of you that don't know, the open source licenses have been paywalled, or the licenses, the open source software has been paywalled now. Right. So to access that, you have to pay Red Hat to access it. And then, you know, how does that affect Almond Linux and Rocky Linux? Well, potentially, they will, they may not be able to clone Red Hat anymore. Right. And so that's important because Alma Linux and Rocky Linux are one-to-one binary compatible with Red Hat. So it's a pretty big deal if you want a Red Hat clone. So you have like the same stability that the enterprises would, but you won't have that now if Red Hat decides to just completely shut out the clones. Wow. So when did this happen then? When was this announced? Uh, oh, you got me there. Maybe four days ago. Oh, wow. Very, very recent. It's very yeah, recent. Yeah, I, yeah. Thought, I thought it was pretty recent. Yeah. And so what's, what's actually mostly bad about it is, you know, everyone was afraid when IBM bought Red Hat, but IBM's done a good job of building goodwill with the community. Things looked great. Kind of like Reddit has existed for so long. They built some goodwill with most people. And then now it's almost like a rug pool. And we're unsure of what the future might behold. Like Reddit could disappear, Alma Linux and Rocky Linux could disappear. We just we just don't know. It's too early. Wow. And um, I believe they have done one good thing with the developer license with how many free? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So previously, if you had a free developer license, you could have up to 16 licenses for Red Hat. Mm. And I believe they've upgraded that to 254 or 256. Wow, so that's like pretty much 20x. Yeah, it is. Um, well, that's pretty generous. It's so. great for a cluster. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. Anyway, as everyone knows, in the Unraid world, we're on, I believe, 6.12 at the moment. Mm-hmm. And that's introduced CFS. ZFS. Uh, yeah, well, we're saying it the wrong way around, you see. <laughs> Correct to me in England. Yeah, I should be saying ZFS. You should be speaking yeah. English. In I should England. be speaking English, English, shouldn't I? Mm-hmm. Hey? <laughs> but yeah, so we've got ZFS in Unraid. So. Yeah. When are you going to be putting that on your server? Any plans for that soon? Uh, probably not anytime soon, but hopefully we can maybe work on a video in the future together. Maybe you could remote in and do some cool things with virtual machines. Sounds good. And back up to my servers in the United States. Yeah, yeah, because CFS replication to better yeah. back up my VMs to you. That's that's, cool. That'll be pretty, pretty cool. That'll be the kick I need to actually deploy ZFS. <laughs> so, otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Anyway, guys, what um, Stefano and I are going to be doing in the latter part of this Uncast episode is we're actually going to build an Unraid server from scratch. We're going to build it with the new 6.12, and it's going to be a purely ZFS server, all with SSDs and NVMEs, and it's going to be just for VMs. And we had a kind of chat about things before doing this, like online, about what hardware to use, we were choosing between using an AMD platform. We wanted to use just consumer parts, really, to be a build that 
more kind of in reach of every single user rather than using very expensive server hardware, very expensive like Threadripper Pros with 128 PCIe lanes. So we actually settled on an i9 13900K, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, a Z690 motherboard. Now, if you can explain some of the problems with PCIe lanes, because we wanted to use a lot of NVMe drives, maybe you can explain to the audience something called bifurcation. Right, right. So CPUs typically have an allotment of PCIe lanes. So I believe the 13900K has 40 PCIe lanes. No, that's too many. No, 20. 20. 20, and then it has four for the chipset. Right. And so the motherboard itself has four lanes. It's a, there's a separate kind of lanes that are available for things like your networking, USB, SATA, uh, or other onboard um, hardware that you may want to plug in. And then the CPU itself also has its own lanes that are separate from the motherboard itself. And so what you can do is, or what you can think of is you have uh, the PCIe slots. Um, some will be a full 16X slot, some will be by eight, or some will be by four, or you'll have like a different kind of mix in there. And they all have to, the motherboard has to figure out how to share those lanes with the CPU and other USB uh, ports or other uh, ports on the motherboard itself. So it can be kind of complex. And the reason why it's important to know how many PCIe lanes you have is because let's say you're trying to have a graphics card, several NVMe drives, multiple USB devices, uh, maybe even some onboard SATA devices. All that bandwidth has to be shared amongst all those devices. And when you run out of PCIe lanes, some devices may not work at all. And mm -hmm. this is pretty common when people try to bifurcate their 16X slot into four by four lanes, if that yeah. makes sense. So by four, by four, by four, by four, uh, when you divide that 16 slot, right? And so what could happen is one of those NVMe drives or two of those NVMe, dri NVMe drives may not work at all because you've run out of PCIe lanes. Yeah. And with PCIe lanes as well, we've got Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5. Correct. Yeah. And the thing with um, PCIe lanes is the different gens, they have different amounts of bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So you can actually run, say, a GPU that's PCI. PCI 3 mm -hmm. in a PCI 4 times 8 and it will run at the same speed as what a PCI 3 motherboard would run it at times 16. Right. So although sometimes you can have fewer PCIe lanes as far as I understand it, the higher the PCIe version is the more bandwidth you get and yep. so you can you can run older devices and still get the full speed. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people are concerned about, oh, you know, my, my bandwidth, I'm not going to be able to fully utilize my graphics card's potential because I'm not giving enough bandwidth because mm -hmm. it's now on a by eight slot yeah. versus a by 16. And usually graphics cards don't even get close no, to using the amount of theoretical bandwidth that's available, you know, to a by 8 slot or by 16 slot, especially a by 16 slot, even with PCIe 5.0 nowadays. So you're not really going to lose performance. Now you may, you may not visibly see or visibly notice that performance loss, but maybe like a, a very specific benchmarking tool. Yeah. You might see that, but generally the common person will never see that in gaming or transcoding or anything of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. How I look at it, it's like if I'm, if I'm driving a car, and we've got a speedometer, and I'm, and I'm breaking the speed limit in the UK, going up the motorway, taking you to see Stonehenge, <laughs> and we're doing 180 miles an hour, and you look at the speeder and you go, hey, Ed, you're doing 180, but if we slow down to 170, you as a passenger would notice unless you looked at the speedo. Right. So real life, you don't notice, but if you've got a gauge measuring things, you do. Exactly. You know, that's a very kind of basic... Probably a stupid way of describing it, but... <laughs> it wasn't terrible. <laughs> but, I'll give you... I'll give you but you've caught me when I've already had a few beers, so... You yeah. Know, you're not going to get much. This is my first, this is your second or third? It is, yeah. <laughs> so as well, you know, a lot of people sometimes worry about having multiple GPUs with a system with lower amounts of PCIe lanes, but the chances of, like, hammering them out is pretty kind of slim. You're not going to be using like all your NVMe drives, all your SATA ports, all your GPUs, your networking, mm -hmm. everything at once. Yeah. Uh, mud, mud, mudden? 
let's re let's re say that modern motherboards right. they're pretty good at managing the bandwidth right and so, honestly the bandwidth is going to be the least of your concern if you only have limited pcie lanes yeah devices straight up yeah. might not work like well, entire slots could completely be, be disabled depending on how you have things configured yeah for sure and sometimes it depends on the BIOS of your actual motherboard. You know, when you actually enable certain NVMEs, for instance. I know right, some yeah. motherboards, you put the third NVMe in and you'll find that the motherboard will disable, say, the fourth PCIe slot. Yep. So, you know, that, that's pretty it's common. give and take. You know, and it's funny too, because like you look at CPUs from like 2012, and I'll use the 5960X as a terrible example, because yeah. that was a $1,200 CPU. Mm. But back then it had 42 PCIe lanes. I know, it's crazy. And you can't buy that today on consumer hardware. No. You basically have to upgrade to Xeons, and it's just mm. like, why have you taken away this amazing thing? And I believe there is a market of people who are willing to pay premium dollars mm. to have access to those uh, PCIe lanes again. I, for one, would love to have that. I'd run the, I currently have a 5960X. I'd love to run it, but unfortunately, it's just completely power inefficient by today's yeah. standards. And it's also, the single thread performance is also very slow. And it's not something that you would want to run. And that's why I've, you know, converted to AMD because the single thread performance is actually great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get better performance at lower wattages. But unfortunately, you, have, you still have to give up those PCIe lanes also on AMD. Yeah. I think what it is, is you get the kind of server like Epic CPUs. They've got plenty of PCIe lanes, official support for ECC memory. Right. And then you've got the consumer CPUs. I think the, the AMD, for instance, the uh, X570 chipset has, again, 20 PCIe lanes to the CPU and four that are used for the motherboard chipset. Right. They think for kind of most people, that's going to be enough for the GPU and maybe one NVMe. Whereas in the past, we'd kind of get more. Well, you had your hardware. extreme series for yeah. prosumers, like the people so, who wanted the extreme of everything, right? But I think what they've done now is they've thought, okay, we've got the top tier for servers, we've got this kind of consumer, so let's make a, another more expensive right. tier, and that's where we get the Threadripper. For example, I can't think of the equivalent for um, Intel at the moment, but Threadripper, where you've got 64 lanes, and you haven't got official support for ECC, but right. ECC works. And so then they go, ah, let's have the Threadripper Pro. So we're going to give you 128 PCIe lanes and official support for ECC. Yeah. And the Threadripper Pro, they were like kind of, in the UK, like 2,000 pounds for, right. I think, a 16 core CPU. So what, in 2012, <laughs> we would get... For 1,200 US dollars, you could get a really, mm. a somewhat efficient CPU the PCIe lanes and the speed. Yeah. But now you're overpaying for an inefficient CPU with 64 lanes, yeah. potentially ECC. And you're never, you're never going to get the full clock speed of what you get in the consumer right. CPU. So if you want, if you want the fastest gaming CPU, well, forget the PCIe lanes. Yeah. It? It's like, oh, yeah. why can't we just have something? There are so that many trade-offs. You, know, yeah. you know, I just want a CPU where I can run lots of VMs and I can have all of the devices I want. Yeah, exactly. With the highest clock speed, so. It's, it's a tough world to live in today, mm. I think. And, you know, and then it's even worse because Intel makes these workstation CPUs that you would assume are targeted at, you know, the business-oriented people that need higher clock speeds, kind of like yeah. the i7s, but they want the stability and the ECC memory support. But even those are excluded from having additional PCIe lanes. So it's like, what, what's going on here? It's like they're specifically saying, giving the finger to any prosumers out there. Like yeah. you either have to choose our consumer lineup or you have to move to Xeon and pay exactly. the, the premium there. Yeah. So, you know, what they want us to have is they don't want us to have- Any fun. <laughs> any, fun with our, any fun with our hardware. So if you want to do kind of the best gaming, you have to have a separate machine for that. And yeah. You want to... Yeah, you're gonna have to buy both. But. That's honestly, that's how it operates in my lab now. Like I have a dedicated gaming computer so I can get top tier gaming. Mm. And then my Unraid server, it is a 5800X, but I mainly got that specifically for the single threaded performance at the time for yeah. gaming servers. But still, is there's that, so many trade-offs. Um, so the 5800X, is that a faster single thread than the 5950X or? So maybe maybe on paper the 5960X right. is faster, but I think real world it the the amount of money that you pay for you wouldn't see yeah. an actual difference. Uh, it's been a lot of, a while since I've actually looked at yeah. that. Have you thought of upgrading to the new AMDs? What is it? The seventy nine hundred series. Yeah. 
I've considered it, but I don't know if it would be worthwhile at mm. this point. Uh, there's not too much to be gained from a server perspective. No. Um, however... Because we've still got the same 24 PCI. Right. We still have the limitations. There's nothing better with that. Exactly. Yeah, so so that. honestly, I think, unfortunately, I'm going to be pushed back into the Xeons world. And I've been looking at dual, like, 70 R720 XDs. You can find those fairly cheap in the US market. And you get 20 cores uh, with those. And you, you get the 48 PCI lanes. Yeah, so that's that's, that's pretty healthy. Yeah. Uh, for especially for my needs, I don't need anything too crazy like 128 PCI mm -hmm. lanes or even 64 for that matter. But you know, but then you know, I'm back to the same problems that we had before: inefficiency, slow. And is that really worth having additional PCI lanes? And it's it's just a really rough area to be in right now. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how our build goes. Yeah. You know, tomorrow and see, you know, how much we can actually push the um, ZFS array, um, the NVMEs, and um, and the GPU that we we pop into it. Yeah, it'll be. But I think you know, as long as we're not running multiple GPUs with GPU pass through, that we're not going to be hitting all of the NVMEs at once. We're not going to be hitting the GPU at once. So I think that we're going to get a really good performance out of the system running a gaming right. VM. Right. And it'd be interesting using the i9 with the performance and economy cores and see... <laughs> economy cores. Efficiency cores. Efficiency cores. I, I keep calling them that. Yeah. <laughs> I keep calling them that, don't I? But, yeah. But, you, you know, know... Intel, you should call them economy cores because then I won't be wrong and it will make stuff no wrong. Uh, yeah, and also, it actually kind of makes sense that, you know, you want your economy. Yeah. It fits in line with the rest of the world thinking, I think. So. I think so. I think this Intel were wrong in naming it. I do. I agree. Just like, have you seen their new naming schema for, for their CPUs? No. no. It, it looks like it's going to be terrible. I, I don't know the specifics, but it looks bad. Yeah. So, uh, not looking forward to having to relearn their naming scheme again. Can you expand on that a bit? Yeah. So I think they're going to get rid of like the i9 13900K, uh. and it's going to be replaced with something even worse. I, I wish that I would have looked it up now, but I didn't think we'd actually get into this part of the discussion. <laughs> so now it looks um, terrible. W would you like me to um, kugel it for you? <laughs> my, my, my kugel might be broken, uh, but feel free to... Um, yeah. This is better than chat GPT, this kugel. Is it? Yeah. You know, ask yeah. it a question. How do I ask it a question? You just talk to it. Just... Kugel, can you look up... I forgot what I was supposed to ask. <laughs> the alcohol <laughs> started to kick in. <laughs> can you look up what the new naming convention is of Intel processors when they come out in next year or the year after? No, you're too lazy. Do it yourself. <laughs> Nice. Sorry about that, you know. Yeah, bad jokes and beer, they go together. Yeah. yeah. It's more fun in the moment anyway. For sure. <laughs> anyway, before we get too drunk, Stefano. I'm already drunk, I don't know what you're talking about. I think, why don't we wrap this part up and go and build the server. Can I take my beer to go? Huh? Can I have this to, as takeaway, as you say? Well, I think off camera we can just like drink as many as we like until we fall over. <laughs> And then when we're thrown out the pub, we'll go and build the server. How about that? That sounds spectacular. Okay. Okay, thanks for watching this part, guys. We'll catch you in a moment.